the people of the YouTube, it is I, Sapphire here once again, and I'm again nice and good and lively and lively for you today. Um, it is currently 3 something in the morning, and um, I kind of just got off work about an hour and a half ago, so I've been kind of just lollygagging around the house, and I figured, you know what, what the heck, man, I'm going to color my hair. So I'm coloring my hair red, as you can clearly see. And uh, now that I'm waiting for this just to set in, I'm, I'm actually sitting next to my heater. It's pretty chilly down here, even though we live in Arizona. I'm sitting by my heater, so it can, like, the heat can, like, make it all nice and redder. Makes the color set in more, if you guys can hear me. Um, but let's just cut straight to the point. I figured, you know, hey guys, while I'm sitting here waiting for my hair to be redder, um, I might as well just do, uh... A rundown of what happened at the Renaissance Fair a few weekends ago, and it was a lot of fun. Okay, no, I know I said this in the other video, so why not? Why the heck not? Okay, as you guys may or may not know, that I did go to the Renaissance Fair last week and to do makeup, uh, scars, bruises, and gashes, and other little whippy witty thingies that the little kitties wanted us to do, and we did it for free, so it was out of fun. You know, hey, we got a free you know, an awesome free ride of going to the Renaissance Fair to we can do makeup for kids, so why the heck not? It was fun. So, um, yeah, we did that. I dressed up. I love dressing up. As you guys know that I do love to cosplay, or I'm pretty much of a rookie at cosplay, so I'm pretty fresh and new to it, but I, I love getting my hands on, like, and, and, and expressing myself through costume. So since the Ren Fair, I had this Awesome. I don't even want to say Victorian because Victorian is a completely different era. Uh, I had this really Renaissance type dress. It was red. I wore it a few three years ago for Halloween where I was Elizabeth Bothery. Um, but it was it has a nice little uh, nice velvet black sleeves that like they droop down pretty low and like in the middle there's like little corset going on and it was nice and long and in to the ground and stuff and I had a petticoat <clears throat> a dress. <clears throat> Uh, to fill in the dress to make it look bigger and clear. And I had a cute little necklace that I made into a headdress. So, um, yeah, here it is right here. That I made into a headdress to make me look more like royalty. Uh, yes, that that was the first day. Uh, I was all decked out. I got so many compliments. It was, it was so sweet. Even the queen said I looked pretty. So that was a huge compliment, even though I wanted to overthrow her and take over the throne. But it's okay, it's okay. I got a compliment from her, so um she saved herself one day. Um but yes, it was a lot of fun. I enjoyed every last bit of it. The kids were the cutest things ever. I love children and when they say that that you look really, really pretty and I take that as a huge compliment because kids are awesome. Um uh the first day we went from oh, gosh, I've been working from it was from like 6 in the morning. Well, I was up until 6. And uh, so around 2.30 in the afternoon. So it was a busy day. It was long. But we got our chance to walk, and walk around and take a look at the place. The place was huge. Um, and it was only about 20 minutes away from here. So it wasn't so bad in like driving home and taking a nap, you know, if I wanted to. Um, so, yeah, the first day was pretty much of a get my feet wet in uh, getting makeup done for the kids. Uh, and then the next time that we met up again, which was our second day, was where I kind of ventured about some, since it was only S3 and we were kind of running low on makeup. So we kind of took a break here and there so we wouldn't run out of makeup so fast. Um, but, oh, kind of got a little carried away and lost track of time on the second day, sadly. Um, because I felt awful. Here, I'll get right into that, but let me let me let me lead you into that story. Um see this the second day I dressed up as a gypsy. Uh I literally had things around the house that I oh that I always wore. So why not just go as something that I normally go anyways, but kind of spaz you know, spruced it up a little bit more and a little bit more whimsical and gypsy and mystical and I, I wore my I wore my everyday rings I mean I always wear bajillions of rings and bracelets um, and I just 
got myself in a purple shirt. All my stuff is clothed. Like, all my clothes are thrown out over there, and I didn't even think of bringing them out. It's in a big pile of clothes over there, and I don't want to show. Anyways, um, but yes, it was a lot of fun. Uh, then we went on a, a lunch break. Again, it was the same thing. We did make up for kids. Uh, so then we went on a lunch break and took a tour around because I wanted to, I didn't get the chance to look around the first time. So I wanted to take advantage of this and go see what other people are doing and go stop at booths and talk to people because these are the coolest people ever. Most unique, awesome, down to earth people. That's just it. And that's just so cool. And they make, and like a lot of these booths, these people make these things by hand. So I wanted to talk to them about it. So I stopped at this one booth before, um, uh, and this guy actually handmade and gets special orders of djembes. Uh, now if you guys may, may or may not know, uh, they are an African, uh, West African drum instrument. You know, it's, it's made out of, uh, the head is made out of, uh, mostly like animal hide, uh, very sensitive things. So you can't wear rings with it. And you, gosh, I don't even know how to explain it. You guys just have to look up videos here. I'll, I'll link in the description of what a djembe is and then let you guys hear what they are. But yes, it was the djembes and I used to be in an African drum ensemble back in Illinois. So I knew a bit about it. So I talked to the guy about it and we kind of had a little kindred moment uh, and we started playing together, and the guy started singing, it was awesome, and I had to leave. So I was like, hey, bro, I'll catch you later, okay? And sadly, I didn't catch him later, because I got trapped at another booth by this awesome guy named... I don't know if I should disclose his name or not, but it starts with an L. And most awesomest dude I have ever met. Uh, I, they, they, they sell, like, those awesome circus juggling things. God, I wish I knew what they were called. But, I don't know, uh, but I was having a tough time. But with the, with the two sticks and then, uh, and then the one stick and you just flip back and forth. I don't know, I was having an issue with it and he, he came over there and started helping me with it. So he's like, uh, he started having, like, small talk. He's just, just, he was like a wise guy too. Like, like, not wise guy, but like, full of wisdom type person who's just like just let the stick just slowly and lazily fall onto your batons just let it flow you know relax your arms bend your knees just let it fall on itself and then eventually you'll get it and then you get to start doing tricks like this and like the whole baton went around this stick thing and i was like how are you doing this guy you are a wizard but yeah, we were just having small talk, uh, you know, we, we exchanged our names and what our zodiac signs were, you know, really cool, whimsical things like that. And uh, I see off to the side that this guy was a djembe player too. So I was like, oh, you play the djembes for how long? And he's like, well, well over a good 20 years, so I'm about to turn 20 in a few months. So I'm like, oh, cool, this thing, you guys, you've guys been you been doing this ever since I was born. That's pretty cool. <laughs> While well, we're still doing this. And then uh, we took a break from the little stick baton thingy because I, I couldn't get it. Uh, and we went over to the gym base, something that I did know how to play. Um, and we oh God, lost track of time. We were sitting there talking and we were reflecting on life and the future and the past and the life. It, it, it was the most mind blowing thing I have ever experienced in my life. Life changing. Life changing. I never I am never gonna think the same way again. This guy was so full of wisdom and it just opened my eyes even more. I thought I was an open person already and accepted a lot of truths and things about life, about people. But this guy just I, I couldn't imagine that things could be open even more. But it opened my eyes even more, surprisingly. I guess there's always room for improvement, especially for things like that. But um Yes! It was the most amazing experience I've ever had in my life. I lost track of time talking with the guy and playing and just feeling the music, man. And and, and I, I missed the last few hours of my time doing uh, makeup. And I want to apologize to my friends that we were doing it with, doing the makeup with together. Really, really, really sorry that I lost track of time. Like, literally, I was so... In, 
entranced with this guy and the drum playing that I time didn't even matter anymore. Like it was just and uh yeah. And and, and I this guy was just so cool and he liked me so much too that we exchanged phone numbers and um he actually invited me back again this weekend to the Renaissance Fair to play with him at the booth for a few hours. Um, it's a temp thing, so he's like, it's not paid, which is, I don't care. As long as I get the chance to hang out with the guy again and play the gym bays again, I'm solid. So this guy literally admired me that much, asked me to come back to the booth and perform with him and his son uh, for people. So yeah. And I get to see a few friends that I haven't seen in a while that's going to be there too. So, <laughs> so father, man, I know I just like spewed all that information and stories just now. My mind is just like, because I had such an amazing eye-opening experience at the Renaissance Fair with this guy. So it was the most amazing thing I have ever experienced. It was so cool. And sadly this guy doesn't live here. He travels around, well, actually sadly not. He's actually pretty, he travels around the U.S. with his family. So uh, he doesn't, he'll be back in Arizona soon too because he's only going to be here for a few other weekends and then eventually he'll come back. And hopefully we'll meet up again because I really don't want to lose contact with this guy. That's how awesome this guy is. So, again, here's a moral to this story. You know, if you've even met this guy, if you meet a person that's like once or twice in your life and actually changes your life, just even though you met him or met that person once and so much can change, just never forget that person because... Things like that happen, and I've met a few people in my life, or I've only met a few times that changed my life, and that person is so extremely, severely special to me. So yes, just keep that in mind, guys, you know. People, there's awesome people out there. You just gotta, gosh, if you play your tune right, your vibe will attract that certain tribe. How about that? Ooh, uh, just just be an open, happy person, and you'll be a, you'll attract those happy, awesome people. Okay, that's just it. Be happy. <laughs> I certainly am. Well, looks like we're running uh, pretty late in this video, so I'm gonna cut it now. So again, guys, thank you so much for watching this video, and I'm gonna be leaving a link of what a djembe is in the description below. And if you guys are going to the Renaissance Fair, please be there, cause I'll be there and I'll be drumming. Sadly, I forgot what the booth's name is, but you know, if you hear drumming, most likely it's me and my my wise teacher. So thank you guys again so much for watching this video. As always, goodbye, Vidrsen, Riverdrecheo, Boa, Adio. Goodbye.